Hello, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I paint these gorgeous old-fashioned roses. I hope you enjoy the video and if you do, please give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to see more of my videos. And thank you very much for watching. I'm using acrylic paints today, titanium white, primary yellow, raw sienna, raw amber, French ultramarine blue, sap green and alizarin crimson and I'm also using flat and round brushes. I had used this panel before and wasn't happy with the painting so I painted over it with blue paint and now I'm painting on the background and I'm using primary yellow um, French ultramarine blue, sap green, some alizarin crimson, actually almost everything that I had on the palette. And I brushed that on neat without adding anything to it and then add titanium white to give it some opacity and lighten the colours. To blend the um, background I use a powder brush which I get from the dollar store and that does a really good job. I'm using a round and raw sienna to sketch in my stems, leaves and roses. It gives me an idea where everything goes in the painting and you will see a bit of it left over but I add lights and darks and different colours to it um, so the initial sketch gets hidden. I'm adding alizarin crimson to the roses, it will lend a pink tinge to the petals as I paint them on and perhaps a little in the centre, although I usually add a centre to my roses, not always, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to add some leaves and um, buds or the, um, I forget what it's called, but it's the seed part, the part that becomes the rose hip um, to the rose buds. I like to add a swipe of green at the base of my roses and when I pull the petals across the rose, across this green, it drags some of it into the white and it makes the petals look a little more translucent and I really like that look. I pull the sepals out from the base of that um, seed pod at the base of the bud and um, I add quite a few colours to that. I start off with um, whatever's on my brush and I'll add lights and darks to that and sometimes I'll add alizarin crimson. I really like that. I'm using a three quarter inch flat for my first petals, the largest petals, and I go to the outer edge and pull it into the center of the rose and then I'll add 
smaller petals on top of that first layer. I use a sideways swipe for the petals that are tucked in the middle of the rows and then for those that are nearest um, I pull those in from the outer edge towards the center just as I did with the petals that are further away and um, I'll go over and add some more sideways swipes uh, to indicate a few more petals just to sort of tidy it up a little bit. This is my second painting of roses today because I forgot to um, erase my um, SD card and I didn't have enough for the first video, didn't have enough space and so I only got half a video. This is pretty much the same as the first picture that I painted except the petals are a little bit pinker so I like this one. don't really see very much of this little rose at the back and so I'm just doing a few sideways swipes to indicate petals. I like to use French ultramarine blue mixed with sap green to reinforce my stems. It's not the only colour that I'll put on there. Sometimes I add alizarin crimson almost always to liven it up a little bit and quite often my darkest dark is made up of um, raw umber with green and blue and uh, it usually takes sort of several layers before I get the stems how I like to see them. Using primary yellow and sap green I'm adding lights um, to my leaves only on the side where the light is coming from that's the right hand side um, I might use ultramarine blue and sap green to add darks as well. I'm using a mixture of sap green, primary yellow and raw sienna and I'm going to lighten my stems or highlight my stems I should say. It all adds a little dimension and makes the painting more interesting. Sometimes in my painting I add the veins of the leaves. I don't always. I like the way the leaf looks just by using the flat brush and drawing it in from the outside edge. I think that gives a lot of dimension to the leaf without needing veins. I usually add the sepals with a small flat, the base of the sepals but they become very fine at the tip and so I like to use a rigger or liner brush to do that part. It's also another item in the painting where I tend to add a little more colour, maybe some alizarin crimson or primary yellow. I'm working in acrylics today and um, it all adds interest in my opinion. When these old-fashioned roses are in full bloom, you see the centre, the stamens and pistils, I think they are called. I have to look up rose parts to tell you. I do look it up regularly and then I forget what they are. But um, I think they make the rose, I think they look make the picture look more interesting and I think they look, make the rose look more realistic. I'm 
going to use a liner brush and alizarin crimson and reinforce my stems with that. I do like to do that as I said before and I'll also add some thorns because these are really old-fashioned shrub roses. I'm not sure um, the ones that you buy in the store have thorns. I'm going to dab a little alizarin crimson on the center of the rose too. Um, it'll make it pop a little bit. I'm doing the thorns. You can't see that well, but um, they appear on alternate sides of the stems and I don't put in too many just a few just to give you the idea well that's about 10 steps to bring it to this point and I think it took me roughly 20 minutes to do this painting I have been painting a long time and I've done many, many roses, so I guess practice has helped. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up and help the algorithm find me. And thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.